Welcome to the second edition of ET Auto Connected Vehicle Virtual Summit. So far, it has been an exciting day with power pack sessions highlighting the importance of connected vehicle in today's internet world. To further give a deeper perspective on mapping and location data technologies, we have a very special guest speaker, Stani Mira Koleva, APEC Head, Hair Technologies. Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you very much, Dipanshu, for the introductions. It is my delight and pleasure to be part of, uh, of the Connected Vehicle Virtual Summit, which uh, this year is, is the second edition. And, and um, I'm here to share with you how location technology, which is the main uh, subject of what Here Technologies does, powers innovation and plays a central role uh, in terms of what the connected world and the connected vehicle is going to look like. And as we all know, this year has been particularly uh, strange with the pandemic upon us and how innovation had to get accelerated and technology like location intelligence a, became part of quite a substantial new development uh, in that sense. So if you think about APAC and particularly uh, the role of India, uh, then the question would be, why India is so important. Obviously, one of the most populous countries in the world, but APAC itself is going to be a major contributor to the world growth. Uh, by 2050, APAC is going to actually own more than 50% of the worldwide GDP. And uh, we expect India will play a very important role in a number of areas. Recent study by Deloitte around the importance of connected vehicles and connectivity is also showing that many of um, uh, the responders in, in the study are showing that they are prepared to pay more for a connected vehicle and a connected service, uh, not only a vehicle to vehicle, but also vehicle to infrastructure with the idea that that's going to create a much safer future for us particularly with the high level of urbanization in, in APAC. And, and as you could see there by 2025, uh, APAC will be a home of 30 mega cities and among them Delhi and Mumbai. Uh, people understand the need for more connected services and for a better way and more efficient way to navigate this uh, uh, congestion and, and, and to deliver services uh, to many more people. The new generation also is telling us there is question mark uh, whether the ownership of, of cars is going to stay the same and whether there is a need to own a car. Um, if you look at 74% of the respondents now prefer to use a ride hailing service versus traditional taxis, uh, it is one indicator that the mindset around car ownerships are quite changing. So that kind of changes quite a bit around the mega, uh, the, the, the mega environment of what the future of mobility and the future of connected uh, services and connected vehicles going to look like. And there are a number of different trends which are interplaying together. And each one of them, uh, perhaps taken in isolation, can be complex enough but the entirety of them have some interactions in, and, and, and connectivity, which kind of so, uh, creates a synergistic approach between the different trends. So if you think about the basic connectivity and convergence of technology these days is creating a possibility that we can create a digital platform, a digital ecosystem around mobility. And I think that is very important uh, element of it. As I mentioned just before, the younger generation in India is starting to question the need of owning a vehicle and they would rather be participants in a well-connected digital ecosystem and part of usage of digital platform for services. We also know that urbanization and the future of mobility uh, is, is directly connected. You know, with Indian cities, we know that uh, the roads are insufficient for, for the vehicles owned. Um, and we know of a number of initiatives of the government to deal with it. And, and, and more notably, last year, the government launched the National Common Mobility Card, uh, which is the, the means of them stimulating a more integrated or intermodal transportation needs 
um, across so many different segments, right? I mean, thinking about the metros, the buses, the suburban railways, uh, through tolls, parkings, smart city services, retail. And that's what the future is going to look like. It's going to be integrated and it's going to be very connected and surely much more optimized. Uh, and connectivity and end-to-end -end, uh, integration is, is very important part of it. We also know that um, in India as well, the, the last year, the, the usage of fast tags became uh, mandatory. And, and that's another example of elements of that connected environment starting to get in place, not only because it improves the traffic flows and, and deals with the pollution, uh, but in general, the capturing of data uh, and providing that end-to-end -end connectivity, these are the ingredients that we will need to uh, get into place for the future of integrated transportation. Uh, if we think uh, from a personal aspect of uh, health and wellness and well-being, uh, we're dealing with a lot of automotive manufacturers. As we know that features in, in the cars around um, seat comfort, uh, mood lighting, allergen level monitoring, um, uh, driver fatigue, um, you know, these elements are going to be mandatory or become very standard feature uh, by 2025. And so the future of mobility is going to be reshaped quite a bit. We also believe with that integrated transportation systems and, and uh, mobility as a service, there is a, a great opportunity to create a platform play. And so we expect that the business models are also uh, going to change and many new ecosystem players will participate in that future of, of digital platform and future of uh, intermodal and mobility as a server uh, as a service uh, a future. And um, if we think about what that means for someone like our um, our company here, technologies in terms of capabilities that we need to develop, um, as I mentioned before we had been traditionally very strong player in um, the automotive industries. In fact, um, a, probably a little known fact, four out of five um, uh, cars around the world contain some location uh, data from uh, here technologies. Um, and so we collaborate very closely with the majority of automotive uh, manufacturers around the world. And some of them are even major shareholders in our business. Um, so we continue to develop and evolve our capabilities in order to support uh, the future of uh, automotive. And, and we believe the future of the automotive will have these four distinct features, which is connected, automatic, uh, and shared and autonomous. Thinking about connected, uh, the significance of that is, is the car itself is going to uh, convert yet to another smartphone or digital platform for consumption of, of content and services. And so we are working with, uh, with our automotive customers to create a very attractive user interfaces and capabilities that make it easier uh, for the passengers and drivers alike to, to make it the preferred way of uh, delivering services and content. And the competition in, in that area is hitting a lot. We are also providing capabilities to not only have similar experiences, but also for different brands to differentiate and create their own unique uh, set of offerings in the car. We are also thinking of how to support the transition to electric vehicles and autonomous. Obviously, electric vehicles and automated driving is for sure uh, the future of uh, automotive and we believe that in, in that uh, transition, location is going to play a very important role. On, on one side, a standard definition map content is going to be consumed for the infotainment and, and, and uh, general uh, plan, uh, general trip planning. Uh, and in the same time, high definition uh, in uh, location uh, information is going to be consumed online as the car navigates uh, through uh, on, on the road and at the moment. So this is a major investment area on our side of the business, but also across all the automotive industries as well. Marketplace itself is, is going to underpin the notion of, of uh, the digital ecosystem and the platform play I mentioned earlier, where 
we will see a lot of different players coming together, connected over this digital marketplace uh, and uh, being able to monetize uh, their data, but also their services. And we could see potentially payment gateways or different type of data sets uh, being part of, of, of these platforms in order to make sure that uh, we deliver on the vision of connected and end to end. And we are also uh, thinking how location could become an important element of managing digital IDs of the passengers themselves and how that's going to enable uh, further connectivity as well as uh, the best possible customer experience and, and personalization, uh, if you will, around uh, this digital platform or this uh, mobility as a service uh, on top of digital platform. And so what that means from um, what, what the location needs should be, uh, essentially it's a combination of us investing further in capabilities that deliver high definition positioning because positioning is obviously becoming a very important part of what the vehicle of the future control system uh, is going to be all about. Uh, it is also our ability to collaborate with the uh, auto uh, manufacturers in their evolution towards fully autonomous. We know the next generation or uh, the first generations of autonomous vehicles will be fully autonomous on the roads where uh, they will be designated for these roads, for example, on highways uh, and on in any other roads, uh, location will need to enable driver assisted services and, um, and hand in hand, obviously of, over a few generations of, of uh, automotive uh, products, we will, we will get on that journey. And so we, I did mention the importance of us having similar formats and similar technology behind the current traditional standard definition mapping and, and location information, as well as the high definition uh, mapping information, which is going to be central uh, uh, for the uh, autonomous driving in the future. And of course, the most important thing of everything being connected and being online is, is really access to fresh data and, and the freshness of, of that information is going to be critical uh, as to the uh, online navigation and, 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 and the control system of the car. And so we are in the middle of uh, creating substantial level of uh, AI and machine learning uh, backed capabilities in order to automate the location intelligence creation, but also the updates and making sure that uh, everything's up to date and, and, and uh, precise as well, uh, as we see the importance of what that future holds. And so in that sense, we will need to create uh, data sets uh, that obviously are going to support all these different requirements for the future but also uh, making sure that we create automation around making sense out of uh, these uh, data sets and keeping them updated and to the highest possible uh, quality. Um, I'm quite proud to say that the 35 years behind our business have created substantial assets around how to uh, collect, process and publish uh, location information, but now we are taking it to a next level where we would like to be the platform, a location centric platform that enables multitude of use cases and enables the connectivity uh, of the future, particularly when it comes to connected vehicles and connected services, moving to a, a mobility as a service. And so we see location uh, becoming probably the common uh, uh, the common connection or the, the, um, frame, the underlying framework uh, behind so many different aspects of the mobility ecosystem. And uh, that's going to be across different type of transport modes. I mean, thinking about India, if you think about the public transportation system, which is the backbone of um, how people get around and, and you know, the, the trains and the buses uh, now accounting for about 95% of the intercity mobility. These need to get increasingly connected and increasingly coordinated because we are talking about a very large numbers. Just if you think about the intercity buses uh, carry about 30 million travelers a day. 
and all the buses within India, right, pre-COVID, uh, was uh, were transporting about 70 million uh, people every day. And add to that, of course, the the uh, metro, uh, which operates now in in uh, about 10 cities. And uh, we add on the trains, uh, and it becomes each one of these silos is quite complex on its own. But we do believe that the future, uh, when we start looking at it as interconnected and integrated transportation mode, uh, is going to be a much brighter, uh, better coordinated with a much higher capacity, uh, better predictability, and better outcomes for cities and citizens. And um, it's going to deliver a very smart and hopefully sustainable from an eco ecological uh, point of view way of, of, uh, uh, of moving and, and also living. Um, so the future in that sense enabled by location uh, can be a much brighter place. And so we, in terms of key takeaways, uh, there is a lot of work ahead of us in in that uh, if in in building that future, uh, and technology is is not the only answer. Of course, it is very important. However, really understanding the interdependencies between the different components and converging the the use cases that are relevant to the future of of connected transportation. Uh, is probably a good start uh, for us in terms of creating a, a common framework uh, and then deriving the requirements uh, which are towards technology, but also towards uh, the operational part of it and how we are going to deliver. We are also uh, quite determined to, to be a, a, a very important part of, of, of what that uh, future of connected shared electric and uh, automated vehicle uh, holds for all of us and, and all the ecosystem players in that sense. And uh, I would like to uh, leave us on a positive note to say COVID accelerated a lot of um, uh, innovation this year. And I would say we probably packed up developments that were going to perhaps take over two to three years into a, a very short, maybe six to nine months um, uh, period of time. And, and we have seen substantial new capabilities and, and a new way of, of looking at things and developing things emerge. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll leave it here. Uh, it was uh, lovely to be able to share some of, uh, of what we do and, and our vision for the future. Thank you so much for throwing light on the work you are doing and on the new technologies you're working on. Uh, I would like to further understand the role of location technology in the fight against the pandemic. And if there are use cases across public sector, governance, supply chain, fleet management and urban mobility. I would say uh, we, we were caught by surprise, obviously, by the need to provide resource uh, flexibly and on demand, uh, particularly medical care and equipment and an ability to, to navigate masses of people and, and, and helping them to get uh, to the closest uh, test center or to, uh, closest medical facility. So location had been uh, very important and, and we've been working on integrating uh, various elements of navigation and, and even things like um, outdoor to indoor navigation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's been uh, important in terms of in, empowering uh, local government and uh, operators to, to deliver these services. We have implemented a number of, uh, uh, of solutions where we were supposed uh, we are, we are, um, able to track real-time medical equipment. Uh, and particularly for critical medical equipment, uh, that's been uh, very important. Uh, that also helps uh, people to, because these are also expensive um, elements of equipment. So it is, uh, it was important to, to work with providers for that. And that kind of underpins uh, many capabilities around optimization of supply chain uh, and end-to-end -end visibility. Um, the other aspect of what we did during the COVID fight uh, was uh, we were working with government to create dashboards uh, where they were able to geocode and segregate uh, areas of uh, increased infection uh, rates and report on that and monitor uh, and then obviously navigate potential uh, or uh, get some policies around uh, traffic uh, restrictions in certain areas. Um, and so in that sense, we saw quite a, a wide spectrum of, of uh, demands that came our way. Okay. 
being a global leader, you know, how do you see the current global trends in mapping and connectivity technologies moving forward right from here on? Because, you know, as you said, there's a lot of acceleration of innovation has been done and uh, connected is one of the uh, link technology which will actually enable autonomous electric and shared uh, uh, going forward. So what is your uh, take on this? Well, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a great one. And, and you know what, there are two major trends I've seen. One is the demand for dynamic data and dynamic services is increasing quite a bit. And particularly as we, we expand the, the uh, plethora of use cases that require or include location as part of the technology stack, the demands towards what data sets are important and how that needs to be delivered as a real time service uh, have increased quite a lot. And the second thing is I see uh, customers of all different industries looking at location to drive various types of new capabilities. And typically that happens in, uh, in correlating their own data sets or their own um, location uh, information to our data sets and creating something which is unique on top. Um, and we've seen uh, applications of uh, where people want to create their own map of closed, uh, let's say closed polygons or um, like in mining or construction sites. Or we are looking at uh, people who deliver emergency services that want to have a particular aspect of, of what that location information should look like or people in utilities, which are um, then looking at how to optimize maintenance and how to, um, how to make sure that you know, they, they understand location and, and even that with uh, link to augmented reality in, in terms of how they can uh, deliver maintenance and support of the infrastructure. Uh, very interesting use cases. And um, now with 5G uh, being rolled out pretty much around the world, uh, we're seeing a lot of interest from, from the telco operators of how location is going to, uh, frankly, enable many of these new use cases that they envision as part of the 5G rollouts. So what are uh, hair technologies uh, further expansion plans in global market? Uh, because in presence of giants like Google Maps and others, how, how do you find your space? and being an automotive. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Obviously, the, the, the fact that we have more and more competitors means that the space is becoming even more interesting, I guess, uh, which we are seeing. Um, our plans is to, to remain focused on what matters to our business. We are uh, a clear B2B player. We, we have very little consumer aspect of our business and, and we commit to, to, uh, to that model and we make it make you know get ourselves to be as good as we can be in that we also partner quite a bit and we would like to make sure that location is being seen as only the platform where various vendors and various partners can uh, connect and create co-create solutions and uh, we will just continue automate and continue building the best quality high definition uh, because that's obviously one big uh, part for what the future holds around autonomous and also improve our services around the API services that we, we uh, offer in terms of these dynamic data sets and, and, and dynamic services on top of location. Okay, so many OEMs are working on, you know, in-car in experience where, you know, they are working on the interference system, maps being one of the important uh, factor uh, to create that uh, the overall experience of you know driving and uh, reaching to a particular location. What are you working currently on? How are you trying to make this experience much better than the previous? Uh... Yeah, so um, we have been traditionally living in the dashboard of a car with, with our products and, and obviously have a, a lot of long-standing relationships. Uh, we know that uh, OEMs are undergoing quite a bit of change, right, in their thinking of what that future of connected car is going does mean to them. And, and of course, there is a lot of um, competition in terms of who owns the eyeballs of the passengers and, and the drivers in these cars. Um, and as more and more connected services are becoming available also for the cars, and we know some of these big players, you mentioned some of them, are very focused on uh, being available also in the car. Um, 
the many of the automotives are questioning the differentiation and and how their brand is going to stand for something different um and how they're going to own the minds and the hearts of uh, of their customers right and who is going to own the minds and the hearts of these customers um and so we're working with um all of them in trying to define how location could be better used by them in terms of a, a platform um there are elements that uh, there are studies showing, for example, that the service that is being uh, um, booked or ordered through uh, in a location uh, enabled uh, uh, context uh, converting about 30% better. So people, we know that already. So, so when you think about the connected platform of the future, location context is going to be very important. But of course, what gets created on top, and this is where our partnership and uh, an ecosystem approach uh, is very important, is going to be the unique set of, of uh, offerings that the automotive manufacturers are going to look at creating. Hmm. So how are you uh, seeing the Indian market? You know, What role India can play in shaping your global strategy? India is just so big and, 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 and obviously such a big important part of the future of the world that uh, in our business we say it, if we can crack the code in India then we can make it anywhere. <laughs> so in that, in that sense, um, I think uh, we are investing quite heavily in India, not only uh, because we are, um, India hosts probably almost 50% of our worldwide employees as we, we have our uh, global center, global mapping center uh, in, in based in India. Uh, but beyond that, we are also working with uh, ecosystem of partners to figure out how to capture data more efficiently in India, how to make sure we process and we have a, a separate division within, uh, within our operational center just focused on, on India. Uh, because obviously, as any country, it, it has its own specifics, uh, what type of data we can get. But we also believe that uh, enabling ecosystem approach is going to be critical just for the size of, of you know, what we need to get covered and, and also the dynamic changes that are happening in, in, in the industry. So are you working with any uh, OEMs here? You talked about partnerships and uh, investments, if you can throw some light on that. Yeah, we, we, we have India included in most of our global OEM uh, relationships, so you can, you can name it most of our uh, global partnerships would include India. Uh, we have recently expanded partnership with Hyundai uh, to include some of the uh, dynamic services around traffic and, and, and weather. Um, we are uh, actively working with um, other Japanese vendors as well for, for projects in India. Um, and uh, we are also looking at expanding to two-wheeler and three-wheeler manufacturers as well in order to make sure. But I, I think uh, we, it's only the beginning. I think the future of that connected uh, driving and connected services is going to be a, a, a completely different play, I believe. One last question. You talked about a lot of data APIs, you know, uses of data securities. So how do you see the security of data? Because, you know, there are a lot of uh, questions and, you know, doubts around that. How yeah. do you, how, what is your view on that? How do you protect your data in terms of, you know, nobody gets to take a hang of it? So that's a very important question. And all of us as consumers have our concerns about that. So uh, we have to take extra care and extra investment to make sure that the security and the data is to the high the security and the protection is to the highest standards. Uh, we are fully GDPR compliant, obviously, being also a European vendor, we, we had to implement many of these measures to the strictest degree very early in the process. And uh, we have also created capabilities uh, called the neutral server, which allows people to monitor and retain the credentials. So we, uh, we have strong capabilities around anonymization of data, um, and we are very strict with that. And we adhere to, to the highest and latest standards around security and, and, and personal protection, personal data protection. Thank you so much for joining in today. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.